How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Spurverts, and I'm joined by the wonderful Emma Story. How are you, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. You're right? How are you? I'm okay. Healthy. Yes, let's Ish. get into the first topic <laughs> of Spurverts. So, the Fiorentina performance, how did you feel about it? Happy. Yeah? I, I, yeah, honestly, I think it's the perfect result for us in some respects because we got the away goal, mm -hmm. we got the draw. Um, I feel like we're going to take them back on Thursday and do them at the lane. Um, I think we played really well. I'm yep. super impressed with some of our defensive performances. Fiorentina have hardly lost or even conceded that many goals at home this season. So yeah. actually it's a really positive thing. And I think when you compare it to how we did against them last season, yeah. I feel like... you know That's definitely a step forward because we, we lost 2-0. It's, so. it's, it's almost that was, I think it was good as well, well, up until that point, to keep the unbeaten run, the momentum going. I mean, we'll yeah. talk about how that obviously ended on Sunday but in terms of Europe I think it's good I think we're set now to get through to the next round and I personally want to get through to the next round do you think though playing devil's advocate yes <laughs> that you know we when we were one nil up we was very comfortable mm. kind of almost cruising and we could have should have got a second goal I don't think we didn't try though I think you know chances just yeah. didn't go our way I mean it happens okay. I think the most important thing was to get an away goal okay. because once you've got an away goal you know that you've got that in the bank when you're playing the second leg at home you know you only need to score once and they effectively need to score twice to mm. even level the tie up so you know I and we shattered a record apparently no team has scored against Fiorentina um, from English yeah, soil before exactly. ever away in, so a, in a European even, contest so even yeah even better all right let's talk <laughs> about Ali I mean, he was in the game. Oh, Delhi. There was a lot of oh, kind Delhi. of controversy surrounding him. The commentators really ran with it. <laughs> um, he had a little kick at one of their players. It wasn't a little kick, was it? it was quite a big kick. It was, a big, it was a big kick. It was, there was a lot of force behind it, but there was definitely intent. Oh, yeah. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Yellow card, was he a lucky boy? He was a very lucky boy. Yeah? He was a very lucky boy. I don't, I'm not really sure whether the ref maybe didn't see the same level of intent or whether he didn't see the same level of contact yeah. or maybe because he didn't follow all the way through. I'm not really sure how he managed to end up with a yellow and not a red there. He's a very lucky boy. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've talked so many times on this channel about everything that boy does makes me smile. Yeah. I'm not sure this made me smile. It did kind of make me like snigger a little bit. Just did it? Was that the naughty side? It's like, the oh, it's, like it's the naughty side. It. And I mean, <laughs> Poch came out after the game and yeah. said, you know, he's got a lot to learn. And he has. I'd be really worried if someone, if he came out and didn't say that. You okay. Know? I'd yeah. be like, well, of course. He's 19. He's got a fiery attitude. He's quite aggressive. But you don't want to knock that entire thing out of him. So this has kind of been a discussion because even Tim Sherwood said yeah. on, on Match of the Day a couple of weeks ago, they oh, asked great. him about his Tim fiery Sherwood. side. No, but he said he likes it. Yeah. And, he, and he said he doesn't, he shouldn't have to hold any of that's that back. A, that's not a ringing endorsement if Tim Sherwood said it. Do you, it out there. <laughs> do you think, I mean, what's your thoughts on him being fiery like that? Do you think he should to have that in his I belly. Do, I do think he should and I think he's just got to learn to harness it a bit better and I was really impressed actually yeah. in the Fiorentina game is that after he got booked and he was obviously so kind of het up Poch didn't take him off. Yeah. A lot of people around me um, when we were watching the game were saying my god he's got to come off he's going to get himself sent off. Poch clearly had a chat with him and was just like right I need you to be disciplined enough that you don't get booked again in the second half and he did it. He did and it's you funny know? because they were having little little niggles at him. They, One of them oh, elbowed god, him I remember were. in the chest. They knew they, what they he was knew. on a yellow and, exactly, that it and they were trying to get in his head but he played it cool. He did and that's what I mean about how he can harness it in the right direction like nobody wants all their players to sit there and be a load of pansies. This and one wasn't a big one sorry coming off of it but yeah. Crystal Palace game, yeah. uh, Kabai on the sideline as well. He kind of went for the ball, yeah. Kabai fell down. Yeah. People were saying, again, is this a bit of, was Kabai making the most of it? I think he was. I mean, and to be fair, there was, he wasn't, that wasn't the only flashpoint at the Palace game. There was a lot of aggro, which you know, yeah. I think we can obviously talk about in a bit. But yeah. um, no, I think Kabai made the most of that. And the problem, the only thing I think Delhi's got to be careful of is that he will start to gain a reputation. Mm. And I think, might already, be, I think it might already be there. Players will be looking then either to antagonise him or to make the most of fouls when he and gets to make it look worse. Officials as well. Remember when Bale was doing the kind of diving stint? Yes. Officials had it in the back of their mind. Yeah, that's always a concern. <laughs> Anyway, the last topic, Crystal Palace. So unfortunately, oh. we've been knocked out of the cup. Um, oh, no. Are there any positives in this? Well, there were a couple of positives out of the game. Yeah. Son, I thought was fantastic. I was he really was. disappointed when he came off. I felt so like was he I. had so much energy, was making so many good runs. I mean, let's face it, we were very, very, very unlucky not to score in the first half. I swear to God, that ball must have just like wavered. Over the how? How? I don't know how. I don't know how. People said it was Adebayo's juju. I think it might have been. Which is black magic. Yeah. Yeah, African black magic. Yeah, so I think, you know, it, he, he kind of made it, it levitate it, across it, it the it line. He leaned it back in. Because literally, I think it must have been about this much not over the line. Because everybody knows the whole of the ball has to be over the whole yeah. of the line. And now we have goal line technology, so we can't even dispute it and say we were No, we can't. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, it wasn't, uh, by our standards, it's one of our worst performances of the season, most definitely. So you're saying the only positives is Adebayor, basically. Adebayor not scoring, not scoring and Sun. 
Um, what about the argument which I've been putting forward, you know, less fixtures? Yeah, but that's I mean, I mean, there's. I know if you got through, there's only three until the final. But uh, say we equalise and there yeah. was a replay. You're think, looking at a wedged replay look, in a, in a I congested th fixture. I think it's fair to say that nobody wanted a replay. And a replay, in a lot of ways, even though we'd have still been in the cup, would have been the worst outcome for us. Because, I mean, God, we're going to get onto like our fixture congestion. We've mm. got so many massive games coming up, it would have been a disaster. Arsenal, with their replay with Hull, are already trying to find a place to, to, to have it and struggling because and think they're about so busy. It. We're going to have West Ham, Arsenal. If Palace was somewhere in or after, that's three d London derbies, exactly. like back to back, and you're going to have to field. It's, it would have took its toll. It would have. Would have took tax. It would have. But I mean, I think like I said at the time, personally, like nobody likes going out of a cup. And I didn't like it. I didn't like the manner that we did it. Like I didn't think we played very I well. I know you, you had your heart set on that cup. I, I love the FA Cup. I've said this so many times before. I do love the FA Would Cup. Would it have been a one-up as well, the fact that it's called the Emirates if we won it? Oh, no. People like are looking at those worse. little petty things, though. Some people are like, that's good. It's called the Emirates. We're going to be lifting I that. I can't call it that. I can't call it that. Yeah, it's the FA Cup fair. and that's the end of it. No, I did have my heart set on it. But in fairness, we have other things to keep us going now. Um, yep. We have Europe, we have the league. We can strategize properly now. We yeah. can prepare for each game's focus. Yeah. yeah? I think, you know, uh, yeah. Go on. I, it is kind of ish a positive thing. Kind I'll of ish. I'll, well, I'll never be totally happy at going out of a cup. And, like, of course, it's been, it's been 25 it. years since we won the cup. So, anyway, guys, this has been Spurverts <laughs> Part One. Let us know in the comments below if you've agreed with anything we've said. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Or disagree. Or disagree. <laughs> follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and keep it casual. Hello and welcome to Spurred on TV. Now, in honour of Deli Ali's showstopper of a goal against Crystal Palace, I've compiled my top 10 list 